Slime VR, one of the cheapest full body tracking solutions out there. I covered it on my channel a little over two years ago, and I'm not gonna lie, it was pretty rough. There was just so many issues that took days to figure out. As someone who uses Vibes and Tundras on a regular basis, picking up an IMU tracking solution just missed the mark on everything I personally desire out of my full body tracking experience. However, after two years, I can happily say I've completely changed my perspective after getting my hands on a new and improved review set. And I honestly can't believe more people aren't talking about these things. I love them. I haven't done hardware reviews on this channel in a long time. That's not really what I'm looking to do here either. Instead, I'd like to share why I find slime so incredibly interesting. It's unlike any other VR tech I've come across, especially in comparison to other full body tracking solutions I've tried. And anyone who uses or is even interested in picking up full body tracking will likely find value in this video, seeing as how relevant it's about to become. So what even is Slime VR? Well, we've got to start by understanding the difference between lighthouse-based FBT and IMU-based FBT. Most PC VR headsets and controllers, such as the Valve Index and Matching Knuckles controllers, rely on base stations, aka lighthouses, to track your headset and controller positions within your play space. Those base stations send infrared lasers, which get picked up by the sensors on each respective tracked part, where they get triangulated into the correct position. If you buy Vive or Tundra trackers, these easily fit into your setup and will also become tracked by the base stations the same way your headset and controllers are. The pros of this are that you end up with impressive accurate full body tracking. It's really easy to set up as you just pair them to a dongle from your computer and you're essentially good to go. Typically, you'll purchase a set of three, one for your waist and each of your feet. Five 3.0s are the most popular choice as of right now, but each one is still $130, meaning that to buy three, you're looking at dropping just shy of 400 buckaronis. And you still need to buy the strap separately. Now, if you're one of the many, many Quest users out there, you're in an extra pickle because base stage cost $150 each, so now you're going to need at least 700 bucks lying around just for virtual feet. In my experience, it's well worth the investment for social VR users, but it certainly does not suit many people's wallet circumstances. IMU tracking works completely differently. Each IMU sensor, which stands for Inertial Measurement Unit, will monitor their own rotation in space, while the software uses your body proportions and headset location to calculate the joint angles and estimate your limb positions. The information then gets sent via Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection to your PC and thus begins to emulate full body tracking. If that sounds complicated, it kind of is. The results are incredibly less accurate, which is why, despite being significantly cheaper, most people still end up opting for the lighthouse tracking instead. They're prone to yaw drift, and you'll find yourself needing to reset those rotation positions fairly often. But some of the pros of this setup are that you no longer suffer from occlusion. There's no lasers that can get cut off or blocked, which makes it possible to lay down under a blanket, for example. It can also be used with standalone VR. You don't have to be connected to a PC for IMUs to work. If you use the Quest version of VRChat, you can still have legs. It's a lot of trackers, a lot more setup, but you're trading that time spent for a way cheaper price tag. I've tried quite a few of the more popular IMU solutions myself before, such as Haratora X and Mokopi. They're not bad, but it's still incomparable quality of tracking compared to Vives, which is why I've never actually bothered using them for VR play sessions outside of just messing around. And my experience with slimes were no exception to that until now. A lot has changed, and that's because Slime VR is open source, both hardware-wise and software, leading to the growth of a community that actually pushes new updates, not because they're a company looking to make money, but because they're actual VR users who want the tracking to be better for themselves. Yeah, the first uh, the first review sets that I sent, uh, all, like, all parts of it, software, firmware, hardware, like, I worked on them alone, for, uh, basically. But since then, in those two years, we have a huge community and a lot of people have worked on it, like a lot. If you don't count people who provide translations, we had over 50 contributors. And if we count people who provide translations, I think it's over 100 now. Obviously, 100 people can do way more than I can do alone, <laughs> especially when I have to focus on business side, on hardware side, on like logistics side. Of it's a big project and they're amazing people, incredibly passionate about what they do, a lot of cool stuff. 
If there's one thing I can say, the hype is real. I'm so hyped about this. There was an early period of time where people were coming into the server and saying like, slime's a scam. It doesn't even, it's not even real. It doesn't even work. It's not even good. And I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to change that perception. I'm going to change that perception hundred percent. I've got 2000 plus hours of full body tracking. It's literally only slime. And I can attest it's come extremely far. The box that the trackers came in was very polished. Cases and stickers were adorable, and the software wizard walked me through all the steps of setup so I wasn't stuck pestering Aaron the creator in DMs for help over every little issue, like last time. The review set that I was sent was the full body set. The minimum amount of slime trackers you need to emulate a set of three Vive trackers is the lower body set, which is five. Only $195, and you can see how it looks on a user I met here. From there, every tracker you add is about $20 to $30 each. You can see on this graphic the different pricings for the amount of trackers and extensions, with the full body set like I have still being cheaper than buying three Vive trackers, and I'm actually able to emulate eight Vive trackers in Steam VR, aka 11 point tracking. I've got independent control of my elbows, knees, ankles, foot rotation, and can also move my waist and chest independently from one another. To be fair, there's enough trackers at my house that I could easily strap on eight vibe trackers if I wanted to, which I've done before, but they are so big and so prone to occlusion that it's never been worth it to me for everyday use. But with slimes, I've really enjoyed having all of those points of tracking in a way that feels secured to my body and I'm not worried about it flying off. It's been barely any extra hassle for me to throw on if I'm going to be using the slimes anyway, and it brings a significantly greater connection to me and my avatar, and more natural movements in the way that I look to others. Alright, before we keep going here, I want to give a quick shout out to today's sponsor, SideQuest. If you use VR, you've probably already encountered SideQuest already, seeing as they are the largest content platform for standalone VR slash MR games, literally thousands of them. From official store releases, app lab games, demos, experimental titles, game ports, anything you can imagine, really. There's so many hidden gems. But what they're doing right now is something kind of special, because they just released a new social VR sandbox called Banter. It's basically VR Chat meets Bone Lab, a social VR app that's completely physics-based. And from now until Christmas, every single week, SideQuest is giving away one free Quest 3 to a random user who's online. So the more time you spend online, the higher chance you'll get of just getting a free new headset. I know, Merry Christmas. You don't even necessarily need SideQuest or VR to play banter, you can download it on Steam and totally play it in desktop mode as well. So shout out to the awesome SideQuest team, check out all the links below, and let's get back into the video. Obviously, Slime VR has been very appealing to VR users thus far, but what started as a labor of love grew over $2.5 million worth of backing on crowd supply. When we actually created the page, it was like around 800, and now we need to deliver 10,000 500 and we keep selling them so it goes up and the scale scale is increasing and that increases complexity but of course, with this increased complexity has come the delays. That crowd supply fund dates back to October 2021, with only the first few waves of batteries actually making it out to backers so far. Part shortages, certification issues, it's only just as of this month that things have finally, hopefully, finished being cleared up to ship. Oh man, the delays. Uh, basically everything that could go wrong did go wrong, and it's surprising surprising that we even shipped whatever we already shipped. I hope we can solve it all and eventually ship all of them. It's way bigger than we planned. We had to redo our plan on how to fulfill it all. Even the last uh, problem that we have is actually the last problem, which I really hope it is. Then it will be before April 24. I hope we can do it before that, but the later we say, the more chances we have to hit the goal. So obviously this is a huge setback, but if the trackers haven't even shipped yet, how are so many people actually using slimes right now? Well, that's where things get extra interesting. Because of the fact that slime is open source, anyone, seriously, anyone can DIY build their own set of trackers for even cheaper than buying the pre-built sets that are experiencing the delays. 
slime was like the first kind of affordable make it yourself sort of thing that you could get so i put my first couple together and before you know it i had ended up making making about 20 of them in total. And I made some for friends. I made some for people who wanted them, but I do like my DIYs, like, it, cause they're nice, they're small and I've made everything. Of course, the straps and everything to fit me particularly. And so they're nice <laughs> because they're custom. Obviously DIY isn't for everyone. It requires knowledge of soldering and how electronics work together, but for those who enjoy the process of building things, it's a fun project that can be done on a weekend. There's even a marketplace on the official Slime VR Discord where a bunch of people make and sell trackers. So if you aren't wanting to wait for production units, you can just pay someone else to DIY them for you. There's no guarantee they'll be good or work, so please use your best discretion if you intend on paying someone to make them for you. Now, although I've been so impressed by the tracking improvements of Slime VR, it still isn't without its flaws. Out of the box, one of my extensions just straight up didn't even work. So I had to nab one from Thrill Set, which I'm lucky I can even do, and was unnecessarily digging through the advanced portions of the documentation just to realize I wasn't doing it well enough all along. I don't know, man, it's just a really finicky setup process. And as of right now, right before filming this part of the video, I had trouble where some of my trackers just stopped connecting to my PC via Wi-Fi at all. I still have no idea what's up with that, so I just nabbed one of Thrill's trackers again. Sorry, Thrill. A lot of people, such as myself, won't have great tracking off the bat because of the nuances of things like mounting placement on the body. It's just impossible to be expected to get it right. But I did attend a meetup that happens every Friday night called Calibrate and Chats that has a dedicated section led by Slime's main event organizer, Z-Rock, specifically to help people get the best tracking possible out of their slimes. The software itself is still not a main release. It's still beta software. It just requires a little bit of like DIY spirit and like a willingness to just dig in, you know, ask questions, learn more. What it is, is basically I go through the server, uh, I, people come in and they get help with calibration. First time slime users, I highly recommend them check it out. There's a lot of tips and tricks. I basically am willing to help anybody that has calibration issues. Um, and it's not terribly hard to set up, but I have found that having that one-to-one, -one, people really do appreciate having somebody just help hold their hand through it. Hanging out with the slime community was a real joy. It obviously attracts a lot of really passionate and intelligent people by pushing a technology that's defined by its users. Even though it's had a lot of delays, I think in a weird way that's been a good thing. The contributors have had time to curate slime into the best experience possible, and it's still getting better. I streamed with these trackers last weekend, and some of the developers even came in and pranked me with the Vive Tracker emulation mode, Bruh. which is pretty hilarious, not gonna lie. Which, by the way, I am streaming after this video goes live using slime, so if you want, come hang out and ask questions. And yeah, that's Slime VR. I'll leave some of their links down below if you want to check it out for yourself. Like if you enjoyed this video and subscribe for more content just like this. Shout out to my patrons who allow me to keep creating videos just like these, especially virtual VIPs, Alyssa Gretlin, Black Amethyst, Dutchman 101, GM, NNN, Penny, Rye6003333, Snake8Head, and Solly.